He is a supporter of Ted Cruz and the author of the book, Rules for Patriots, How Conservatives Can Win Again. Steve, thank you so much for joining. Let's pick up on the title of your book, How Conservatives Can Win Again. What has Ted Cruz done wrong that he is now just with a very slight lead in the polls right now in his own state? Well, you know what's ironic about this, Tamron, is when he launched his campaign last March and all the smart sets said he had no shot, he's actually in the exact situation he forecasted last March he was hoping to be in, which is that he'd win one of the early states and come out of Super Tuesday as one of the two candidates most likely to be the nominee. And I think when all is said and done tonight, I think what's likely to happen is exactly what you just heard Ted say. I think you'll see Donald Trump in first place in the delegates, but he probably won't even have 25, 30 percent of what it will take to win. I think you'll see Ted Cruz in a solid second place, and then I think you'll see a drop-off. And then I think the conservative movement, that many of whom, some of the biggest names in our movement that have come forward in recent days to say they'll never support Trump as the nominee, I think then they have to have a serious question, which is if Marco Rubio is 0 for 15 against Donald Trump, where is he going to win? If you don't want Trump to be the nominee, who is the only candidate that is in position to defeat him and has shown that he is able to do that, and that candidate will be Ted Cruz. I know that you've joined uh, the hashtag that's been trending, Never Trump. But going back to your theory that if Marco Rubio drops out, somehow there's an opening for Ted Cruz. When you look at the national numbers, when you look at the polling coming out past Super Tuesday, you could take potentially Marco Rubio's support and Ted Cruz is still not the winner. Where are those of you who believe somehow that if it's a mano a mano, two one on one race, that Donald Trump gets beat. I don't see those numbers there. Help me understand what you're thinking here. Well, would those be the numbers that before Iowa told us the last 13 polls before Iowa, Donald Trump was going to win? Would those be those numbers? I mean, these polls have been all over the place in this cycle. I've documented many times how they've been wrong. They were wrong in the Kentucky governor's race last time. If you get down to a two-man race, whatever you're polling now is illegitimate because the paradigm shifts. We're seeing thing that... Trump has changed the paradigm. There's no question about that. But now, Tamron, you're seeing the conservative movement change the paradigm as well. All the pressure that existed at this juncture in the past, well, we've got to rally behind Romney. We've got to rally behind McCain. You're seeing the exact opposite from the conservative movement now. You are seeing open opposition to somebody that most of the media wants to anoint as the presumptive Republican nominee. And when we get into the second half of this primary calendar, Tamron, we're going to see something that we only are going to see in a couple states tonight. Close primaries, closed caucuses. Okay. So this wave of independents and Democrats that supported Donald Trump in my home state of Iowa and have done it in other states, those aren't going to be available to him in many of those closed primaries to come. Okay. He's going to have to beat the, uh, the opposite candidate, the alternative candidate, straight up with actual conservative voters. Steve, one of the things I like about you is that we can have heated back and forth without it being personal. So here I go with this. You've said that the media anointed Donald Trump. Thousands of people, including in my hometown of Fort Worth, Texas, showed up to see a Donald Trump rally. I am a part of the media. I didn't buy one ticket mm -hmm. or one bus pass. Thousands are showing up to see and support him from your party. How is that a media anointed candidate? Is that a Republican anointed presumptive nominee? And you and some of the other conservatives are now in denial. That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it. Today, Real Clear Politics came out with a story that showed Donald Trump has received approximately 64 times more media coverage than Cruz or Rubio in this race. I was coming back from the National Religious Broadcasters just the other day, Tamron, and here is what I saw. What I, what I saw is that on CNN, they played Donald Trump's full rally with Chris Christie, not once, but they played it twice all the way through, they barely showed Marco Rubio at all, and then they said, oh yeah, here's this Ted Cruz guy. This has gone on for months. I'm telling you, Tamron, if we covered you as much as Donald Trump has been covered in this Republican primary, you'd probably be leading it too. Well, I've got four TV shows, so I'm doing okay. <laughs> but, but in reality, though, I guess what your theory is the media has breadcrumbed all of these people to Donald Trump's rally. Why can't it be his message? Why can't it be that they do support building a wall that he's not said how he's going to build? They do support mass deportation. Why does it have to be that the media has anointed him? Why can't you and others face 
that thousands within your party are okay with him not being specific as long as they somehow believe that he might beat Hillary Clinton and he's the best choice. I, I think we're not looking at his supporters. We're not looking at the rallies and numbers because some within your party want to blame the media for his rise, as if people can't think on their own. Because you're kind of saying that his supporters aren't thinking on their own, even though he says he likes the, uh, what was it, the low educated. Uh, well, that is kind of what it's, it's saying, because that is kind of what I'm saying. I've never seen in my time in politics, not Obama 08 even, have I seen a worse cult around a political candidate. And that's the most disturbing thing about Donald Trump, Tamron, is that he is capitalizing on using all the negative stereotypes the pundits on channels like this have of conservatives. Now, he is winning, but his average turnout is 34 percent. We keep hearing he's winning evangelicals. You know, I know the evangelical vote very well. His average evangelical turnout is 32 percent, which means about three fourths of evangelicals are voting no, which means about two thirds to three fourths of Republicans are voting no. And so what we're looking for is an opportunity to have a candidate who honestly stands for what we believe in, who has demonstrated he has the integrity and character to be as unstable as Donald Trump, who doesn't play the left's victimology game. Well, the Trump University suit's happening because the judge is Hispanic, or I can't disavow the KKK three times. We're looking for a candidate that actually is a conservative, someone that wants to conserve the things that made this the most exceptional country on the, in, in, in the history of creation, as opposed to Donald Trump, who's just the next megalomaniac to come along. Just quickly here, there's a new national poll and a head-to-head -head matchup. It shows Hillary Clinton beating Donald Trump in a general election. If your party's nominee is Donald Trump, do the Republicans lose the White House? I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, where his negatives are at now, and we have any, you, listen, you, your, your team hasn't even started spending $2 billion on him yet. And, and Tamron, I'm telling you, there's a treasure trove of stuff out there. There's reality shows. We're going to make Marla Maples great again. We're going to make Maury Povich great again. We're going to make sleazeball, reality TV, daytime talk shows great again with all the material out there on Donald Trump if you make him the nominee. So I want everybody watching this to know, you go out there and vote for Donald Trump today, you're voting for Hillary Clinton to be president.